I welcome all of you to lecture number 10 in machine learning section and this lecture is about callback lever divergence and convex interpretation of callback lever divergence it is also known as scale divergence in short and it is used in many other algorithms such as expectation maximization algorithm expectation propagation algorithm it is also used in hypothesis testing suppose you want to determine the number of parameters for a regression model or you want to choose the dimensionality of your parameters then you can use scale divergence for this purpose you can also use BIC for this purpose but our present focus is on scale divergence so in this lecture we will focus on two aspects of callback lever divergence the first one is a convex analysis using the perspective functions and the second one is information gain theory and we will focus on two topics that is information and entropy if you don't understand the convex analysis part of the lecture then don't bother much about it as it will form the focus as it will be discussed in much detail in optimization channel in that channel we will also consider several other cases like regularized scale divergence and many other situations along with the BIC so just focus on the second part that is information gain analysis or information gain theory so I will discuss this lecture in in this sequence first I will discuss the convex analysis part and then I will discuss the information gain theory and if you are not comfortable with convex analysis then you can leave this part of the lecture and can directly focus on the second part of the lecture so the convex interpretation so in this part I will prove that clear divergence can be solved as a convex program because this function is a convex function so let us begin with this callback lever divergence is a convex function and can be solved efficiently by convex programming that is what I want to propose and the second point is minimizing the clear divergence is same as minimizing the relative entropy between two vectors or distributions in case of optimization we are concerned with any kind of function or vectors and in case of machine learning and statistics we are concerned about the distributions that is we want to identify the difference between the two distributions and we use a clear divergence for this purpose in machine learning or statistics we are mainly concerned about the hypothesis testing or determine the difference in a two distribution or in case of pattern recognition we want to model the, vari uh, the variable x a random variable x with the distribution q when it is actually coming from the distribution p and then we want to identify how much more information do we need to perform such tasks then we use clear divergence for this purpose so here are perspective functions so consider function f which maps n dimensional vector to a real number and its perspective function is a function g which maps n plus 1 dimensional vector to r a real number so the relation between f and g is such that g is a perspective function and g is a function of two variables that is x and t where x is n dimensional vector and t is a real number and your function f is a function of x where x is an n dimensional vector so the relation between these two functions is that g is t times f of x over t and the domain of g is clearly set of all x and t such that x over t is in the domain of f such and t should be greater than 0 so this is the requirement of perspective function that your t the variable t should be greater than 0 so according to the convex theory if a function f is convex function then so is its perspective and likewise if a function f is concave then so is its perspective so the convexity of a function is preserved under the perspective transformation so if you are if you are having a function f which is a convex and if you have, and if you apply a perspective transformation then the convexity of the function f is preserved it is if it is convex then its perspective will be convex if it is concave then its perspective will be con will be concave so proof of this thing can be skipped if we just want to focus on callback lever divergence but I will prove this 
Now here I introduce the epigraphs. So epigraph of function f is a set above the curve of f or above the graph of function f. So consider an arbitrary function f whose graph is represented by this blue curve and this is the region above the curve or above the graph of function f. So this set, this whole region is known as the epigraph of f. Epi means above, therefore epigraph means above the graph of function f. So this whole set is epigraph of f. Above the curve, the region above the curve is the epigraph of f. So this is the meaning of a graph of a function. A graph is a set of values of your variable x and the value of that function at a particular value uh, at a particular value of the variable such that your variable x belongs to the domain of f. And likewise, epigraph of f is set of x and t, your variable or your variable x and a new variable t such that x belonging to domain of f and f of x is less than t less than or equal to t so as you can see this is a graph this is a plot of x comma fx okay this blue curve is a plot of x comma fx and this epigraph is a set of values x comma t says so that at a particular value x all the values above this point lie in the epigraph of f that is so consider this a value of x say x is 50 and suppose the value of fx is negative 0.5 so all the values of t which are greater than negative 0.5 at x equal to 50 lie in the epigraph of f so this is the interpretation physical interpretation of epigraph of f and mathematically it is represented in this form. So consider the perspective function of function f. This was your function f and this is the perspective function of this function f. And now we consider the epigraph of this function g, the, per the perspective function of f. So let this epigraph of g be represented by the set of values x, t and s so that x, t and s belongs to epigraph of g therefore this relation will hold and it is less than or equal to s therefore we can move this t here and we get this relation f of x over t is less than or equal to s over t that is what we are getting is that x over t comma s over t belongs to epigraph of f okay so epi so basically this represents that epigraph of g is an inverse image of epigraph of f under the perspective under the perspective mapping taking x comma t comma s to x comma s over t so therefore epigraph of g is a convex set so for proving this thing again we will have to go more and more deep into the convex optimization so so these issues will be discussed in the optimization channel and I will skip the proof of this thing and I, and I am directly stating that convex sets are the sets such that convex all of a set is a set itself. So if you are having a set and if you determine it is a convex or not there are many other there are many other ways in which you can determine whether a set is convex or not or whether function is a convex function or not but the most simplest one is that if the convex hull of a set is a set itself then this set is convex set so finally we are concerned only with this thing that perspective function of function f is a convex function original function is convex then perspective function will also be a convex function so we are concerned only with this thing so now let's get back to the kullback lever divergence so what we have considered up to this stage is that we prove that under perspective transformation or under perspective map 